My name is Becky and I'm an educator with the Galt Museum. Well, since I've been working from home, I've been thinking a little bit more about plagues and epidemics. And um, also, in order to keep up my correspondence uh, remotely, I went to the post office and got some stamps and was reminded that uh, it is the year of the rat. So combining these two things, um, it got me thinking a little bit more about the plague and also about something I heard when I was young, that Alberta has no rats. So let's um, talk together today a little bit more about rats and Alberta and why we claim to have no rats here. I think we should start by taking a look at a map that has been floating around on the internet for a while. And I think it's pretty illustrative of uh, what I'm talking about. So this is a map that is showing the distribution of Norway rats worldwide. The red is where there are rats, and the blue is where rats are not present. So that looks like it's pretty much everywhere in the world except for the polar regions. Uh, Antarctica and the Arctic area are both blue, as well as, if we zoom in a little bit, we can take a closer look at North America. We see that in North America that there is an Alberta-shaped zone that is rat-free. So how did this happen? Um, it was not by chance, for sure. We'll get into the specifics about Alberta, how Alberta has kept rat-free, but I want to go back a little bit further and talk more about Norway rats. So Norway rats are one of the most adaptable species on Earth. They've very successfully found new habitats across the globe. They reproduce very rapidly and are omnivorous and can eat just about anything that they can come across. So humans and rats have actually co-evolved. They have um, moved together through space and time. But rats originated in South Asia. And there are two main species of rats, um, the kind of rats that we think of as the main pests. There are black rats, that are sometimes called roof rats, and they tend to live in warmer, more tropical locations and are arboreal, they tend to live up in trees and have adapted to um, live up on roofs and uh, travel between structures by using vegetation and trees. Then there's another species of rat called the brown rat, also um, known as the Norway rat. Um, and they are very closely linked with human activities. They have learned to thrive in cold climates by utilizing human infrastructure. With their excellent gnawing abilities, they can chew their way into buildings or burrow underneath foundations, and in some places causing very extensive property damage. But in this way, that they can survive harsh winters by seeking protection from the cold by living with or near, near human-made shelters. So they cannot survive in the cold Canadian climate without places specifically made by humans. One of the reasons why people have concerned about the spread of rats worldwide is because of the spread of disease. Rats have been known to be carriers of different diseases uh, throughout human history. Uh, most specifically, they're associated with the plague, the bubonic plague. It's called the bubonic plague because of swollen lymph nodes in your body that become necrotized and turn black. So um, these swollen lymph nodes are known as buboes, and that's why it's called the bubonic plague. Now, the plague is actually a bacteria uh, that is spread by fleas that live on rats. So the fleas leave rats and infect human hosts. So it's a bacteria. So unlike some of our current concerns about viruses, uh, the plague is very treatable with antibiotics. But since that did not exist in the Middle Ages, the death toll was pretty devastating in the 1300s especially, but there were different um, stages and ages of plague. And the plague still exists today. Many people think of it as being extinct, but there are still rodent species all over the world that harbor the plague. Cats in Wyoming, marmots in Mongolia, prairie dogs in North and South Dakota, and in Madagascar, it's, um, bubonic plague is still carried by rats there as well. Um, so it is still common, but because of modern medicine and antibiotics, 
it is very rarely lethal unless an infected person does not seek any kind of treatment. So a little bit more about rats and why they can be such a problem. And again, I'm mostly speaking about Norway rats, which are most associated with uh, transferring diseases to humans because they do tend to live near human structures or in human structures. Norway rats are very prolific. Norway rats are mature enough to have offspring at two to five months of age, and they can breed at any time of the year. Females can have three to 12 litters in a year, and they can have up to 22 uh, offspring in one litter. So if you look at the maximum amount of numbers, one mother can give birth to over 200 baby rats in one year. And of course, those offspring can also, as they mature, have litters of their own, so their population can explode very rapidly. And this can be very problematic. And it became a little bit alarming in Alberta in the 1950s. So here's a map showing the spread of the Norway rat in Canada. By the 20th century, rats were making inroads into all parts of North America, having first been introduced to the East Coast, traveling with humans on board ships. Black rats were introduced as early as the 1500s, and Norway or brown rats followed a little bit later and kind of took over a lot of the habitat that was being used by black rats. So that was in the late 1700s that rats really started um, making inroads into the interior of the Americas. And they began to encroach upon Alberta's border from the east by 1950. And this caused concern as they can be really destructive, they can be very prolific, they can carry disease and cause a lot of destruction to crops and property. So as rats neared Alberta's borders in the 1950s, Alberta decided to have a very focused response to the influx of rats at the door. So, um, the area most at risk of infestation is right on the Alberta-Saskatchewan border. So there was a field crew of researchers that were studying uh, the sylvatic plague in Richardson ground squirrels, and they came across a den of rats right on the border of Saskatchewan and Alberta near the town of Alsask. There was a den of rats that they discovered, and they were concerned about the spread of disease uh, using rats as vectors. So they involved the Department of Agriculture Pest Management Department. So in 1950, every municipality was determined that they must appoint a pest control inspector. They designated a perimeter, which is the yellow area shown on this map, and that was designated the rat control zone, and it became regularly patrolled, at first by an outside private pest control contractor that had rat expertise, and then the province took over the management as soon as they were able to coordinate their efforts. Since rats were new to Alberta, many people could not identify or had never seen a rat. So that became the next part of the rat control program was extensive education um, initiative. So, like I said, most people in Alberta had never seen a rat or were not familiar with the signs or evidence of rats. So posters and flyers were distributed at post offices and grain elevators. Um, preserved rats, uh, rat specimens were shared at agricultural fairs and exhibitions and with schools. And so in this way, they were able to educate the people of Alberta about how to look out for rats. Now, in Alberta, it became illegal to keep Norway rats as pets or to harbor them on your property. Lab rats and pet rats are Norway rats that have been bred for special characteristics like their color. So you cannot buy them at pet stores in Alberta like you can in other places. Researchers and scientists can get special permits to have rats for research, but there are very strict conditions for doing so. Many posters, flyers, and pamphlets were developed to educate Albertans about the evidence of rat activity. It taught them how to look out for feces, nests, and chewing evidence as ways to identify rats, and also taught Albertans how to safely eradicate them, usually using poisoning. Um, they also developed a new logo, as shown on one of these posters. They developed the rallying cry of CRUA, which stands for Keep Rats Out of Alberta. 
and that logo was seen on many different publications. Now you might have noticed that the posters that have been developed for educating people share some similarities with some of the anti-German war posters from just a few years earlier. People who had recently been involved in fighting the spread of Nazis turned their sights towards rats. And the posters have a very similar aesthetic to some anti-German war propaganda. And they also invoked similar military zeal in stopping the spread of rats in Alberta. So here are some pictures of the rat control in action uh, at two different times. In the early days, in 1952, there was definitely some rat problems near the border with Saskatchewan. Um, but the rat control went to work and was very successful in eliminating rat dens and educating people to be on the lookout for signs of rats. The other picture is a more recent picture um, showing an unused farm building that is being destroyed as it was harboring rats. After the building was raised, um, a backhoe went in to make sure that there were no tunnels or burrowing rats that had survived. So this is serious business, getting rid of the rats in our province, and there continues to be rat patrol even today. Um, they not only inspect the perimeter, but there are also instances where rats can hitch rides on rail cars or highway vehicles, and there is a hotline 310 rats uh, that's a toll-free number that you can call any time to report any rat sightings. They follow up and investigate any tips on sightings of rats, although most of them actually are misidentified. Sometimes we'll, people will see a young muskrat or maybe a diseased squirrel uh, that looks similar to rats, but in instances where rats have caught a ride, the rat patrol deals with them uh, very effectively. So, in humanity's centuries-long battle with the rat, only Alberta has claimed indisputable victory. You can't ignore the rat, and uh, he is a menace to health, home, and industry, and Alberta has been very successful in preventing the infestation of rats within the province. So here's just a couple more um, posters and information about keeping Alberta rat free. So does this mean that there really are no rats in Alberta? Well, mostly that is true. But there are rat-like species that originated in the Americas, such as muskrats, kangaroo rats, and bushy-tailed wood rats that are also known as pack rats. They do thrive in the province, but they don't cause the extent of damage and problems as Norway rats. And that may be a discussion for another time because those are some very interesting species as well. But for now, I just wanted to say, Krua, keep rats out of Alberta. And I have one last question for you. Do you know what a group of rats is called? Just as a group of crows is called a murder, a group of rats is known as a mischief. So thank you all for listening today, and I hope that you are all doing well, and I look forward to seeing you at the Galt when we reopen.